Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project for Beginners. This is lesson number nine in the series. Today we're going to be talking about recovery and the direct method. In previous sessions we have gone through the updating process and the recovery method, but I thought we could look at it on a bigger project so that you could get a better sense of what's happening. I've tried to keep it as simple as possible in the previous uh, video lectures. And if you are just starting out with beginning to understand updating, look at the links in the description below and you can go back to the various numbers, uh, previous videos like number eight, number seven, number six, and get a good sense of things. If you're really just starting out, you might wanna just go back to uh, lecture one. Please also subscribe to the channel. It helps us build this community on construction and Microsoft Project and other related areas. And you can see on my playlist the different videos that I have. And you can click notifications as new videos become available. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to do a quick review of updating, very quick, uh, just to get people up to speed and refresh you if you've watched it in the previous videos. I have this project here, which is a administrative building. Uh, it was for a place just outside Chicago for a book that I wrote and on project management, planning, and scheduling. And so we're going to do a quick uh, update here. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have the uh, uh, baseline set. So I'm going to go to Project, Set Baseline. Not sure that it's set. It's not set. So we are going to set it. That makes sure that we have a memory of everything that's going on on our project. And the next thing I'm going to do is now that it's set, and I know it's set by going to the variant screen, I click on the square icon box, I right click, go down to variants, and I can see that this is saying dates. If that said NA, like not applicable, I know it's not set. I also know it's set when I go to set baseline, it'll tell me last save. So once I've set it, then I've saved it, I don't have to worry about doing that again. And I'm going to put in a status date. So I'm going to go to project, project information. And you see here where it says status date, not applicable. Well, let's put in a status date. So this is May of 2023. So I'm going to go in where it says status date over here, not start date, status date. And I'm going to put in, in let's see, May was it? May 2023. And let's pick maybe around the 19th. So Friday there, and we're gonna click OK. Nothing happens except here, you can see it says May 19th, 2023. You could also set the status date here, but I do find Microsoft Project gets quirky sometimes with the year for some reason. So I usually go into Project, Project Information to find that status date. All right, I'd like to see the status date line because we're gonna be doing the, up, uh, the recoveries using the direct method very shortly. Uh, so I'd like to see the status date, so I'm gonna click on grid lines and all I did was I right clicked in this Gantt chart area with my mouse and I selected the grid lines line. So right click grid lines brings up the grid lines box. There's all kinds of extra lines and things you can do in Microsoft Project more than you probably ever want but I do like to see the status date. Click the status date solid line. I'm going to make it red so it's very visible. I'm going to click OK and now you see it. So there it is right on that date, which is the 19th. Right now it's not showing by day. If I like to see it show by day very quickly, probably the easiest way is to go view and just say, I want to see it in days. And then it'll show me right to the day. So I can see it's right at the end of the 19th there. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to put in some actuals. I'm not going to get into too much detail other than to say that you put actuals, usually you right click and you go to the tracking and that's where you can put actual start dates and actual finish dates for everything. And so like uh, you can put for letter of intent, if it was supposed to start on the April the uh, 12th, then I could put here and I could go, what was that, 2000, 2023, yeah, it's, it's a year ahead. So April uh, 12th, so I can put that there, actual start. And I could say that it is 100% done. So it'll just mark that done. This one was also supposed to start on April 12th. So I'll just move that one ahead quickly to April 12th. And there you are. And then I'm going to say, say it was 50% done. I could go to the task tab here. 
and I could click on 50% and that will mark that line halfway through the activity. So you see the line is marked halfway through as being 50% complete. I could also under the task tab just click 100% or I could type 100% here. Um, either way it does the same thing. Uh, so that's showing you how you can put the actuals in. I want to create a little bit of a, a delay here. So what I want to do is make sure that to create that delay, I am uh, showing something that's a little bit different here. So maybe, maybe on this activity here, so this was supposed to start on the 10th by the look of it. Maybe we're going to make it start much later than that. I'm going to go to the site trailer and what's that, May? So we're into May of uh, 2023 and I'm going to create a bit of a delay there. So maybe I'm going to make it, uh, let's see, if we start that one instead of uh, May 10th, maybe we'll start it around the 19th. So I'm going to move that all the way over to there. So you see how it pushed way out there, way out there, and it made this turn blue because it's no longer critical. This is now becoming critical off of this line here. And I'm going to just quickly go to my entry view just to look at the predecessors and what's going on with the predecessors there. Uh, so we've got here, we've got that milestone, and then we've got this um, jumping out to there because we're saying that this didn't start till then. So it's just pushed it there, right? And so now what we want to say is everything else is on track. And I quit. I did this in a lot of detail in the previous uh, video. So again, it's in the description. If it's kind of fuzzy for you, if I'm going too fast, because I really want to get into the recovery aspect. But I'm going to mark everything on track up to the status state. So rather than do calculations, like if I go back to the tracking view, I would have to figure out how many days is done, how many days is this activity, and what percentage is that of this uh, activity and same with this activity over here the quick way then if everything is where it should be or where I want it to be the quick way is to just select everything and then everything to the left of the status date I'm gonna mark on track and there's this nice little icon under the task tab called mark on track you just click it and it marks everything on track up to that status date and it calculates you know how many days long this is and how many days uh, you've completed. So it looks like it's, uh, what do we got? It looks like it's 10 days long and we've done eight days. So 80% is complete. So it did all that for us. So we got eight day actual duration and two days remaining, uh, which is helpful uh, from that perspective. So now we know exactly what that, that's taken. Now on the cost side, it's done some calculations and I, I talked about that in the previous one too, but we'll see now that there is if we go to the cost tab, which I just did, uh, if I pull this over a little bit so you can see more of it, you'll see that there's likely a variance. So there's $3,540 variance. And that's because this project's taking longer and there must be some variable costs that have been added to it. So it measures your baseline cost because this is a cost loaded schedule. Not all schedules are cost loaded, but this one is. And if something is costing more, like somebody's working more hours because this is now extended the finish date, then it will calculate that based on what information you put in the resource sheet. So I slide to the left and I scroll down resource sheet and you can see I'm paying like the project manager site super. I'm paying certain people an hourly rate. So likely that's where it is because I didn't change any other costs. If I wanted to see exactly, I click on this little square icon box, go to cost. It should tell me where I'm losing the money and where things are costing more. Um, so for whatever the reason, the laborers are actually costing less. Uh, the uh, That might have been from before. I'm not sure. Well, actually, it wouldn't be from before because I set the baseline. But this is where your variances are, right? Um, so this is costing more, this is costing more, and this one is costing uh, less. And so we have those changes that have taken place in our costs. Now I'm going to slide to the left go back to our Gantt chart, but it's good to remember there's also that square icon box in the resource sheet. So I can go back to the entry view. This is where we create our resources. And again, go back to one of the earlier videos if you're not sure about resources and that sort of thing. I have one on that and it's in the description below. We go to the Gantt chart. All right, so we've created that. We've got a variance now in time, but I, I don't know how much variance do we have. Like. I can see things have moved and this sort of thing, but what, what exactly has gone on? So let's go 
and check the variance screen and that will tell us time. Cost tells us the difference in cost. Variance tells us the difference in time. So we've got a five day variance. So that's where uh, it's costing us more in time. We have seven days that are uh, changed. Uh, so this was pushed out. This one pushed out and this was critical up to this point. So this whole time didn't add to it, right? Seven days, two days of it added to it plus the other five. So two days was really an area of float. If I went back and I checked my previous version, I would see that there was two days of float with this one before it, this, this delay happened and that's pushed that out. Now, of course, I would wanna know what caused that and I would put a note in that as we've discussed before. So I would wanna know what's causing uh, the delay with the site trailer. Well, these days, perhaps it's a supply chain issue and we couldn't get the site trailer for whatever the reason and that caused a delay. That might be what it is, right? Uh, so I would put a note just by double clicking on the activity and under notes, writing down supply chain uh, issue uh, causing seven day delay to activity and five day delay to critical path CP okay so we've got that we've got that noted all right so that's fine I don't really see things too well in this screen I like to see the tracking Gantt and we talked about that I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to tracking Gantt all right so we're in the tracking Gantt view now I'll make my text a little bit bigger for you you know you just go to format textile so it's a little bit bigger that you can see at 14 times when you switch screens it shrinks it down a little bit all right so we've got uh, we've got our uh, information here I'm going to go now to the uh, variant screen so I can see those numbers again the five and the seven days and I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna bring this up onto the screen so I'm gonna go to the task tab scroll to task it's always the quick way to bring it up on your screen it'll bring up whatever row you're in right on your screen in front of you makes it very quick to do if you didn't know that and you don't see the status date line here but the status date is here like just because i switched screen the status date's there but when you go to a different gantt chart you have to insert it again if you want to see it so i'm going to just right click grid lines you get good at doing this at any rate once i put it in though i put status date then when i flip back and forth it'll be there and so I'll click ok and there it is okay so we can see our status date so now what we want to focus in on is getting this five days back we want to get this five days back and I want to talk to you a little bit about what I call the direct method I kind of put this together myself for a book I, I did like I told you on project management planning scheduling and um, so I'm just going to quickly flip to a screen so you can see that a little bit better okay we're here anatomy of a recovery the direct method this is what I call it it's really getting down to um, the fine strokes of how we recover the time. And this is really the crux of why we do what we do. We want to document what happened and we want to figure out how do we fix it. We want to iterate. This is where you're iterating the schedule. No schedule is perfect from the get-go. The critical path comes under a lot of criticism because the truth is nobody knows exactly what's going to be happening two years down the road on a project. We do our best to put in time frames and link the predecessors. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that we should be doing to iterate the schedule, but we're feeding back the information at this point. And we're also, the nice thing about the critical path is you can see something that has pushed out your project for the rest of it according to what you know now. And you'd wanna see that early as possible. So I'll talk about in other videos, other methodologies, particularly lean, and last planner system which is a great system but as far as the critical path goes we do need to understand and have sort of a protocol of how do we fix the longer term schedule right and get the time back to zero so i look at it from this perspective of these uh, six points and it took me a while to come up with a word that kind of fit it to be honest 
I mulled over it for a couple of years before I actually all of a sudden saw this word direct and I thought, okay, this will work. Uh, so we first off, we want to detect opportunities along the critical path. Well, it does us no good to save time on things that have float. And we've talked about what the critical path is in previous videos. And on my playlist, you can see lots of videos that go into, you know, exactly how the critical path is calculated and all that good stuff. But we do want to look along the critical path to save time. So we need to understand that. And that's what's in red. We want to try to get the time back sooner. We don't want to get it back at the end of the project. Why? Because something else is going to happen next week, next month, uh, next quarter. And you want to have some flexibility later on. If you take everything out of the end of the project, when you get to the end of the project and something goes south on you, you won't have any flexibility. We want to also get that time back and we don't want to spend any money. Who wants to spend extra money? So we look for the no or low cost solution. As you move along in the project, the costs tend to get up because you've got fewer options. Early in the project, you've got a lot more options. Later in the project, your options become much more limited. But you always are looking for the no or low cost solution. Contractually, you're not supposed to look for the most expensive way to get the time back. You're supposed to look at a very sure way that's not going to cost anything or very little money. So we try to look for the lowest cost solution. So these two kind of work together, number two and three, immediate and reduced. They, you know, yeah, if I can wait an extra week and do it for nothing, I'll probably wait the extra week. But I don't want to wait six months before I try to get the time back. All right, so we've got that there. And then we've got experiment. Well, that's the nice thing about Microsoft Project. It allows you to experiment. You can do sensitivity analysis. What if I did this? What if I did that? Best, and using Lean Last Planner, is you're actually doing this in a very collaborative way. Like there's all kinds of uh, different ways. We can do pool planning. We can do make ready schedules. We can do weekly schedules. We can have these discussions. But we definitely want to collaborate by the, with the people doing the work. I can always make a schedule on Microsoft Project come back to zero. But it means nothing if you can't. I don't even know why you're watching this video if you can't actually make it happen on your project. So you want to make sure that what you put into the schedule you think at this moment is doable. And number five is the people that are going to be doing that work believe that it's doable because if they don't think they can do it, then it's not going to happen. So you need to get their commitment to that. We also, if we do that, you know what, next week, next month, something else is going to go south on you. Something else is going to um, delay you. And if you've been able to fix things as you've been going along, then this is going to help build the team. The team is going to get more confidence. There's more self-efficacy with individuals and the team that you can do things. And when things, problems arise, it's kind of like, okay, we've got a tool, we've got a method, we know what to do, and then we just roll with it. And you iterate, iterate, iterate. So that's kind of that process of the direct method. Let's apply it right now and see how it goes. All right, so we're going to see how we get that time back. So let's do that. All right, to get the time back using the direct method, I'm going to detect along the critical path. In other words, I'm not looking at things that have float. This shortening this doesn't do me any good, right? Like uh, usually I insert the duration column in the actual variant screen. So I usually insert the duration column here. And again, this is a little bit of a uh, more complicated get that there there we go insert column D for duration this is a little bit more complicated schedule so I just want you to follow the steps on it and hopefully this will make sense for when you get into your projects uh, but I got very simple examples in the previous videos that you can go back and just follow straight along with okay so shortening this does nothing for us see watch it'll just only shorten that one activity here it won't shorten anything else because it wasn't on the critical path so i'll just click on do get that back up to the three days it should show five days over here it does now if i shorten this one because it is critical it would help a little right so if i did that now you got three of them that are critical if i shortened it again it won't help anymore because the other two are holding it steady right so we've got to understand how the critical path uh, works now we've got four and three. So that's way ahead though from where our delay started. So let's go back here.
because we want to follow the direct method. We want to look along the critical path and we want to look sooner rather than later. So here, we want to start at the status date going for, forward and see if there's any opportunity for us to save time. Because maybe, you know what, maybe we can do the site layout while the trailer is going on. It's not necessarily that it has to be a finish to start uh, relationship or maybe the hoardings and fencing can be done at the same time as the site layout or the um, washroom and temporary power they're already being done so we can look at some of those things for example uh, just to to pick a quick one here maybe we could save one day if i double click on that uh, bar there right on it then it'll bring up the task dependency box i could have just double clicked on here and went to predecessors and done the same thing but i'm just showing you a shortcut if i go minus one day here then i've just brought it back a day and now i'm down to six and i would want to put a note you know in this to say that we're starting this uh, a day early and making sure you're starting one day before site layout finishes verify with laborers all right, just to make sure that that's going to work. Whoever it is that would be doing it, you want to make sure that you verify it. You might find that you have to do four or five things to get the time back. Clear site and grubbing, excavate foundation uh, is another one. Then you got lay down fill area as indicated on the drawing. So you got another two days there and compact fill so those ones are going to kind of have to go the way they're going this one though you might be able to um, actually shorten that one so you might be able to shorten that one and save some extra time there so we've got it from took that down one day so that brought it to five to four days we could bring this back perhaps two days because uh, we've got extra equipment on site so we could bring that back two days and now we're down to two days. And again, I would put a note and say whatever it is that's going on with that and confirm it with whatever trade. So we're basically right now, we're looking at the critical path. So detecting along the critical path, we're looking sooner rather than later, immediate. We're looking for a no or low cost solution. We're not working weekends. We're looking for something that's not gonna cost a lot of money uh, for us and uh, we're experimenting right so we're experimenting on this all right so let's take another look along here uh, we're down to two days and maybe we have to uh, look down a little bit further so let's see what the activities are form foundation walls uh, form columns again if we have bigger crews maybe we can be doing them both at the same time uh, or some of the other aspects, eh, maybe we could do that. Let's say form columns here, uh, which is over there. Uh, let's put that at minus two days. And so there we go. And we click OK. Now, if you work in the civil sector, uh, heavy industrial, you might say, what's he doing? Why is he putting a negative lag? We can't put a negative lag. Um, on those sectors, they generally don't allow putting negative lags so instead you could put a start to start with a positive lag and that would bring it to here just make sure you close off that so you have no open ends if you don't know what i'm talking about again go back to some of those earlier videos all right but right now as you can see i brought it back to zero so following that direct method detecting along the critical path looking sooner rather than later i don't know how we're doing on our cost let's see if we are Maybe we're even ahead on the cost uh, because we've shortened some of the variable costs. Yeah, we we are actually. So whatever we've shortened here is actually saving us a fair chunk of uh, money. So, and again, if we weren't sure about why that's happening, we could go back and we could check with our resource sheet and see who exactly is or where exactly are those cost savings coming into play. And it seems like it's coming in the laborers because we over lap those that might not be true we might have to go back into the resource sheet or into resource usage and we might have to go under the laborers and look at you know what what exactly is going on if we go to 
uh, task and we go to uh, scroll to task, uh, we could start flying along and looking at the laborers' costs, and we might say, you know what, because we overlapped uh, the laborers in one spot, it might be that we have to bring in an extra laborer to, to make that work, and we might have to up the hours or up the labor on that. So it might not be true that that quick savings that um, I'm demonstrating there, but we could analyze that and we could take a good look at what's going on. If we're doing cost loading, if we're not doing cost loading, then we've essentially brought the time back. We just gotta make sure that we have the resources there to do those particular activities. That's why it's important to put a note there. If you go to the entry view, uh, I don't think I've got it inserted right now, but always good to have notes. Insert column, the indicator column is your friend. So I type I for indicator and it'll show you wherever you place notes and then you would be reminded by whatever the notes say. That's why you always want to put a note when you're thinking something or doing something so you have that. So essentially now I've gotten into the file naming protocols uh, in one of the other update videos, but you do want to name your files, update, name them, recovery, be very, very clear about it so you can follow that through because now this would be for sure the recovery file of May 19th, 2023. Well, this recovery file next month, for the next month, is going to be the new project schedule. Now, of course, it's gonna change daily and weekly. That's what your short-term planning is. But this new plan is what you're trying to or attempting to follow to keep you on the path to get your project uh, completed. So then next month, you're gonna rename this file and it's gonna become update. And probably by that time, it'll be like June 20th or something. And I'll be update June 20th. And so you're gonna see, how did you end up this next month? What actual things happen? And then you do save as, and if it's June 20th, you'll do a save as and you'll call it recovery if you were behind. And that's how you keep track in a contemporaneous set of as built schedules as you move along. So in an upcoming video, we're gonna take a look at how we insert changes and look at how a change impacts the schedule. If you want more detailed views, you can take a look at my playlist. I've got some playlists have over 40 Microsoft Project videos, a little bit more advanced and very specific, uh, but it should give you a good handle of things while you're waiting for my next video. Uh, I'm Tom Stevenson, hoping this uh, gave you a good insight on why we're updating, how we're recovering, the direct method, use it to your advantage. And I wish you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. If you have any comments, please leave them below uh, or suggestions and don't forget to click subscribe. See you next time. Bye for now.